Mauricio Pochettino takes over. We know about his track record in Europe in the English Premier League. We know what he did with Paris Saint-Germain. He gets signed to a $6 million a year contract press conference last Friday, first meeting with his team on Saturday. He had a lot to say. Mauricio told the players, I am challenging you to achieve what the U.S. women have achieved. U.S. women have won four World Cups and an Olympic gold medal. He says, I want you to believe that under my leadership, with the three coaches I'm bringing in who were with me in Europe, you will win. And then he told them, we will compete. And competing is different than just playing the game. That's in your face, fast tempo, physical football. And he says, I look at this roster. This is a good generation of players in the Americas that we have inherited. So really positive, but flashing his credential of what he accomplished at Hotspur, at Chelsea, and at Paris Saint-Germain. And the players, led by Christian Pulisic, know his track record with young guys. And what has he got on that roster? Uh, lots of young guys. Gio Reyna. Oh, yeah. Bologan. Yeah. He's, he's got a ton of young guys who he will coach up. So this is fascinating going forward. And now they'll go to their workouts. They have workout windows where the players come back on loan from England or Italy or Spain, wherever they are, uh, or Mexico, and they'll practice together. They'll play a couple friendly. So he'll have access to them for small windows of time to implement the system practice. They'll play a couple friendly. So this will be fun going forward. It got me a soccer fan out there. I mean, when the whole Burhalter thing was going on, we got overwhelmed with people and fans formed that opinions about soccer. What do you think about Mauricio as the head coach of Team USA? What do you think? I'm excited about this because I think he could make a difference. I remember for the longest time, we always said, oh, the USA isn't very good in soccer internationally because all of our top athletes play basketball and football and everything else. But, you know, you don't need to be that big of a guy to be a really good soccer player. And they're getting a skill because a whole bunch of these guys are going to play abroad and yeah. they're practicing and playing in those leagues. And they're coming back here, uh, you know, for that window to work out and learn and then wear the colors and play. Yeah. So I think to that point, I think there's a lot of highly skilled, athletic soccer players in America. And we've kind of been building and building, but then the, the coaching never seemed to kind of get us to that next level. So this could be an inflection point on the curve. Track record here, this guy and what he's accomplished, pretty impressive. And can you imagine Raider 49er fan who got deported and wound up here in San Diego speaking as if he knows all about soccer? This is kind of amazing what this guy's bringing to the podcast. Hey, back in the day, I worked at the San Diego Sports Arena during <laughs> when the San Diego Soccers were playing back in the day, selling popcorn up and down the aisles. That was a lot of fun. Soccer is a great sport, and I would love to see America more widely embrace it. I broadcast in the sports arena. You're probably walking around, you know, popcorn, popcorn. <laughs> I broadcast. I did the Cleveland Force indoor soccer games. We played oh, here. Yeah against the San Diego Soccers, and I think it was the era of Stevie Jungle. Yes. And, 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 great and Julie V. Oh, yeah. It was phenomenal. It yeah. was unique. And that was when they were drawing really big crowds. Oh, they would sell it out. Yeah, I mean, not 1,200, but big crowds. Yeah, it was rowdy. I mean, it was a great time. And they, they put on a good show. Cleveland Force, that was you. That was me. All right. Hacksaw spotting in the early 80s in San Diego. Yeah, we had... Uh, we had a center, or I think it was called a midfielder at that point, indoors from Argentina. And he had this huge, long last name. Good guy. His name was Ruben Ostigaraga. Oh, wow. And that's tough doing a broadcast. So I just started to call him Ruben 11 Letters. And everybody <laughs> knew who he was. He was really good. He was six foot three. He could run like hell. And we had a Central African forward. I think his last name was Tutu. Short guy, built like a fire hydrant, and he could run. It was like the indoor game was made for his game. Mm. And he'd, he'd come up the pitch, the floor, and he'd bounce it off the sideboards, and then he'd dart, take the rebound off the sideboards, walk in and score on a goalkeeper. I've never seen anything like it. And he kept doing it. And the defenders just had no clue what the hell he was doing. And uh, I think his, his nickname was Baby. I think it might have been Mohammed Baby Tattoo. And he would, awesome. he would bring it up the side. Defender would come to get him at the at the line. Mm -hmm. He'd bounce it off either bounce it off the glass or bounce it off the board, 
ricochet around the defender, walk right in the score. It's just the most amazing thing I've ever seen. That reminds me of Jamal Franklin on the Aztecs throwing the ball off the backboard, yeah. getting the rebound, and then Slamming making it. the shot. Yeah. Hey, time for fans for.